still three two, seconds, right? Three. We'll probably find a way. Done. We should be live. Welcome to Should Make Spaces. <laughs> uh, yes. I wonder if there's anybody here that isn't usually here, right? So I can probably just shorten my usual rigmarole. This is the web page, bantervr.com. Yeah. Got all the stuff you need. Top right, that's what you want to aim for. The docs and the Discord. That's it, basically, in a nutshell. Otherwise, this is an uh, FAQ event, and there's lots of cool stuff going on right now, so I'm just sure you guys my got some questions. This is the web page. Me and Aline have been working for the last Bander couple of hours on earmuffs, if you know what that Ooh. is. Yes! <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Ooh. Welcome edition. So, I, I think we have the working solution now in my build. I, I open up the voice screen. There's a new slider under voice volume, which is voice distance. Yeah. And when you click it, you get a band that appears about 50 meters away from you. And then you can slide it down and the band comes closer to you. You can see visually exactly how much uh, or how far you can hear. So I just pull it right in and then I don't have to listen to any of you guys. I can just stand over here. What are you saying? <laughs> don't know. Tony, I see you're laughing. I guess you're yours. laughing. I can only guess. Right? <laughs> because I have no idea. <laughs> You can't see me laughing, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you suppose you can. I do light up. <laughs> but yeah, the hope is that this will uh, make it a lot easier, right, in those uh, busy spaces to be able to kind of isolate your conversation around just a couple of people. So I'm sure it's just going to be another one of those settings that you... Uh, obsess over basically and you're constantly changing and trying to see oh is it going to be a bit better like this oh lovely but uh yeah the truth is uh hopefully it should go the farthest way to be able to make the audio a little bit more comfortable in here so pretty excited uh, about that because i think a lot of people want that and we have managed to squeeze it in with an update that should be days away so that's uh nice. how soon you can look forward to it but um yeah, why don't we kick things off? Uh, oh boy, we've got a guest there. Maybe we could say hello to the guest for a laugh. That could hello. Be a good thing. Hi, Tiny hello. to go. How are you doing? Welcome, everyone. Can you hear Thank me? You. Thank you. We can yes. hear you fine. We can hear you fine. Thank you. Welcome. I'm listening. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, I know you're <clears throat> divine. I think we've been in uh, Lara Croft world, but um, I am honored to be here among you. And I hope not uh, interrupting anyone. Not at all. And welcome to you. Uh, Thank you very much. So yeah, how we normally do this is a Q&A. We've got a little podium here. You can see it says on the thing there, you can just roll on up, ask me any question you like. Usually questions are about making spaces in banter, but you know, we could certainly broaden that topic to also include making avatars. Uh, if I can't answer, I can always lean on Aline here to help me uh, or any of the rest of you, right? Um, but other than that, you know, I'll be honest. We can talk about whatever you want. We can talk about what I had for dinner. It was lovely. It was some what pasta. What did you have for dinner? It, 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 ta what's that thing, tagliatoni or whatever? It's the little bundles it's of pasta that on. Yeah, that's the one. So I had some of that with a little bit of past with a little bit of uh, tomato sauce, homemade, a little bit of uh, lemon and salt and uh, a little bit of pepper. Why not? taste of sugar let's go and uh yeah loads of meat we had some garlic bread no garlic bread not this time oh, but what i did so sad. i made up for it in cheese i made a garlic bread out of pure oh, yeah. cheese oh, so it was go. a cheese it was a cheese it was a garlic garlic bread shaped lump of cheese with <laughs> garlic <laughs> <Spunked> all <laughs> over the top of it right <laughs> well, yeah that. Lovely, yeah. So, there's lots, there's lots to uh, digest there. <laughs> so, uh, well, if, if, if there's any, uh, <laughs> 
Oh, if there's any follow-up questions off the back of that, feel free to wrangle yourself on up. Do you know what? Maybe we should just put this out. I, love, I like the waffle format that we do, right? Where it's just an open conversation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Shoseki. Go ahead. I'll repeat it. Sure. Sure. Uh, so what Shoseki asked was, uh, oh. can I talk about material properties in Banter and how they differ from graphical things like in 3JS? My follow-up to that is, what graphical things specifically do you mean? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, it's actually much the same, really, If uh, when you start to think about it. Um, materials in 3JS are effectively shaders, right? Uh, that's kind of how you can think of, about them. Um, different instances of shaders. That's basically what a material is. It's a shader instance, if you kind of want to think of it like that, right, in a simple term. And, and in terms of what we're doing in Unity, it's kind of the same. You know, you're going to have the ability to use pretty much whatever shaders you want, including custom ones. Uh, and from there, then you'll be able to access their properties and change their properties, right? Change their properties at runtime, change them from visual scripting, change them in many different ways. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think what you'll find is that uh, it would probably be, I guess, more capable. I would say it's fair to say that um, it's more of a convention to jump into kind of building a custom shader in Unity, whereas it's not really something that you might do in 3JS. Not something uh, that, you know, people don't do, because obviously they do. There's a lot of custom shaders in 3JS as well. But I feel like with Unity, that's kind of something that you have to do, mostly probably because they kind of provide an incomplete set out of the box. So you kind of have to start leaning into creating your own custom shaders there, which honestly gets you over the hump and has created a massive number of shaders out there in the wild uh, in the community that people have been playing with, right? Which is great, you know? Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, I think it's going to be just as capable, just as complex, uh, potentially. Um, we've got some default shaders that we're working with, which are basically mapping what Banter does right now, which in effect are diffuse shaders, right? Uh, everything you're looking around, uh, you know, maybe not the stuff we're looking at in here because this is all a Unity asset bundle. But if you ever see that prototype texture on the buttons and stuff like that, and it has some very basic shading, those are uh, diffuse shaders, slightly customized diff diffuse shaders, just adding extra things like uh, front and back face calling, stuff like that, which aren't in there as standard. Uh, but that's basically all they are. We have two of them, one that supports transparency and one that doesn't, basically. And uh, we swap those in and out depending on whether you're... Uh, whether your A-frame stuff is using transparency or not. Um, but yeah, I can see you've unmuted. You got a follow-up, Shoseki? Gotcha. Uh, no, not really. Uh, not really. Um, uh, they are separate entirely, in fact, those things. You can use what Unity calls a physic material, uh, which you can apply to a collider. Uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with the graphics, and it's really completely unrelated to uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> a material that you might use with a renderer. Um, a physics material has only a couple of properties, really. It's got dynamic and static friction. And there's one other property in there I can't think of right now, but they're actually pretty simple. And there's only really some things that you can only, you know, some basic stuff that you can change with those. And obviously, if a slip, if a surface is slippery in real life, it's never really slippery in one direction, not without applying some kind of force to it, which is, yeah, then you're starting to piece together all the bits and pieces of uh, physics uh, in Unity. But yeah, that's... Best to think of that, I think, as completely separate from the rendering materials and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah. 
it is there is absolutely a physical material that you can use i mean the new sdk is doing everything that the existing sdk does and since the existing sdk can make use of physical materials the new sdk does as well yes that should be absolutely possible um we've gone a little bit further with some other physics components too uh like configurable joints uh i think it's probably fair to say that with the new sdk we haven't sort of jumped in and tried to map every single unity component that's there um i think the plan is to try and meet uh the requirements of what the existing sdk does first of all at a minimum because we want that backwards compatibility and then also we're building some games ourselves internally. So as we step through that process, we're identifying components that are useful and exposing them as we go. But in reality, once the new SDK is out, we're going to be eager to hear if anybody thinks there's a Unity component that we haven't mapped and they want to be able to use it. And there's a number of components in the physics uh, scope, let's say, that could get really interesting to use. Um, yeah, I mean, I've uh, found myself learning more and more about Unity physics as I've been building out this demo paintball, which is physics based, right? All the projectiles are just shot and uh, and that's it. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, definitely going to have all of that in the new SDK and you'll be able to change all that on the fly. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely possible. Um, you can address shaders by name, so you just need to know the name of the shader. And then as long as it exists at runtime, you can then use that. So any way that you could load stuff up via kit bundles or whatever else, even if it was in the main asset bundle. You know, what's really interesting about how the new system works. So the current system, uh, you've got this separation right between javascript and what goes on in the browser and then unity and what goes on there and we have our unity sdk which is kind of like a collection of scripts really more than anything else and then on the javascript side it's able to create a hierarchy of objects but as far as it's concerned it cannot see any objects that don't exist in that hierarchy and what that means is that if you've loaded in a, a an asset bundle for a scene JavaScript can't find or see any of the objects in that asset bundle. Or in the same regard, if you load in a kit bundle, uh, JavaScript has very limited uh, scope in terms of being able to access and change properties inside the kit bundle or in the asset bundle. But the, the new SDK, the way it works is that JavaScript can indeed still create its own hierarchy of objects. That's all per perfectly fine. But you can just flag any objects in the scene or in kit bundles that you want JavaScript to be able to see. And once it can see them, then it can change properties on them. Now, you're always going to hear me talking a lot about JavaScript. And honestly, maybe I should make some space for Aline to come up and talk about visual scripting after that. But the truth is that with JavaScript, it's actual scripting, right? You can write whatever code you want. You can make use of external third-party services and APIs and all of that kind of mad stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, even the, the current setup we have can kind of allow you to do that. But if we couple that together with the amount of power and control we're, we're uh, we're going to be enabling on the Unity side, then things could get really, really interesting, right? A lot of things that have been clunky and hard and anybody here who's ever used the A-frame event and the A-frame trigger combo will know that that's just a band-aid to try and get over this uh, lack of interoperability in the current SDK. But the new SDK is literally just gonna let you get access to any game object in the scene, uh, created dynamically in a kit bundle, any of those things. So, yeah. No, it does not enable that capability. Certainly not source in source form. 
Um, as far as it stands right now, I mean, we've looked into this a little bit and it depends on the uh, engine that you use, right? But in, in the case of Unity, it compiles all shaders at build time into a binary format, right? And only that binary format can then be loaded into the game. So uh, either they're shaders that we built at the point at which we build banter itself internally, or it's shaders that are built into somebody's asset bundle whenever they build the asset bundle. So it is absolutely possible through that method to get custom shaders in, of course, but loading a shader at runtime isn't something that's necessarily easy uh, with Unity, especially uh, on as many platforms as we want to target. Thanks for all the questions, Shoseki. I don't know if I need to explain any of that for the stream. I hope uh, a lot of it just made sense, but you know, who cares? I'll just look like a mad person, and that's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, so cheers for those questions, Shoseki. Maybe I will... Oh, Faye, are you making your way up to the... I was letting Tom know where to go. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Tom. Uh, well, I, again, I might have walked in uh, over my head here, but um, maybe could you just talk a little bit about persistent rooms and mod tools? Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, so uh, persistent rooms is kind of a fundamental in banter because every space is a web address. So you can kind of think of, you know, the collection of spaces in banter, much like a collection of web pages on the internet. Uh, so as persistent as that address is, that's about as persistent as you can get a space to be in here, which is pretty persistent, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And gives you a, 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 you know, an address that you can use to access that space. Um, moderation tools then. So there's quite a few different things, I guess, you've got uh, the ability to do as a moderator. If the space is yours and you've uh, verified it as such on the SideQuest website, then you're able to use a no-clip camera so you can fly around the whole space. It's got some beautiful smoothing on it. We use it for actually recording footage. Uh, you can also obviously kick and ban anybody from the room. Uh, you've got full control over all the instances in the room, so you can shift yourself or others between different instances, uh, which is a great tool, honestly. If you've got somebody being disruptive, you can bump them to another instance. Or if you want to have a conversation with somebody, I find that really great. You can bump both of you to another instance. Then you're in your own private version of the room temporarily. And this, it doesn't actually uh, bump you out of the room. I'll tell you what, Tom, I'll just give you a quick demonstration where I'm going to bump you up and then back down an instance so you can see what it's like. So up you go. Oh. Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> and back down you go. Welcome back. Welcome back. Tom. And that's what it's like to move people between instances. Yep. Pretty seamless. Yes, I see that. Uh, that was fast. There's one that other feature impressive. then, which is uh, quite handy, which is just the ability to mute somebody for everybody in the room. So if somebody is being particularly disruptive, you can mute them and then nobody else will, will hear them. Yes, right. Okay. Uh, well, I'll just have to then uh, get the 101 that helps me set up the persistent space and start uh, doing all that. So thanks. Yeah, sure. No problem, Tom. We can help you with that on the Discord, myself, any of my staff. We can get that set up for you. There's no issue there at all. Oh, good. Perfect. Yeah. It's a bit cumbersome right now, but it's going to be a lot less okay. cumbersome soon. Yeah, that's um, no, all good. I, I'm just going to just stay and keep listening. So, yeah. We've got this new thing, right? Which is also going to, I think it might actually go into production maybe in maybe tomorrow or the next day. And it's basically hosting your spaces on uh, on our own servers, right? Rather than using Glitch. We've been talking about this for the last week or two, but it's right. going to go live now in a day or two. And um, it's optional. You don't have to use it. You can host your spaces wherever you want. But we want to be able to give people a, a reliable option that at least they'll only have to deal with Oh my God, Bob just shot straight up into the air. Uh, they'll only have to deal with our downtime and not have to deal with our downtime compounded with other third parties downtime as well. So yes, yes. that's the hope there is that we can kind of create our own uh, in-house homegrown solution that people can use. And for any of you that are familiar with verifying uh, your site, it's kind of that 
that's where the entry point is going to be initially for the UI. You'll be able to, instead of verifying your, your site, you can instead uh, flip a switch and, and move into SideQuest hosted option. And then it allows you to upload your asset bundles there and then on the screen and to upload your index.html and, and a script file if that's what you need as well. So it's hey. mostly what anybody would need. Oh boy. That was fast. Who did that? Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> That's a demonstration of the moderation in yeah. action, Tom. I had my Tom. finger on the trigger because I saw them trying to smack Kurt. <clears throat> so then when I heard the voice. There you go. <laughs> We're going to add a more silent option that will put them into a bubble and just float them off up into the air. That's the plan. That <laughs> yes, awesome. yes. <laughs> to add to that, right? Uh, only because people have asked for a silent option. Yeah. What's that? Bubble. Have a meditation playing in the bubble to calm them down. I was thinking we just go. make them like. Uh, uh, <laughs> Play baby like the teacher the from uh, uh, Snoopy, or you know, womp, 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 womp. Yeah. and that—that's what they hear us as, and we hear them as, right? So it's like, as soon as they're gone, that's, that's it. <laughs> you can hear the muffling kind of in the background, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, okay, uh, Divine Slayer. I'm assuming you've got a question, and that's why you're near the uh, podium. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so I will be building soon, and I'm not sure uh, how y'all work with uploading to like PC and uploading to headset and all that stuff. But gotcha. um, other forms or other places they have like where you have to upload it um, to like certain times. You have to do it for PC, and then you have to do it for the the headset. So whenever you come out with the the phone, uh, will you, will there be a separate option for that as well? For the That's phone a really good option. question. Thank you. That's a, a really, really good question. Um, so as far as having to upload one for each platform, you generally, uh, I guess it's generally per operating system is probably a good way to think about it, right? So phones, uh, a lot of them use Android, as does uh, our standalone headsets. So the existing Android-based ones that we're already using will work just fine for Android-based phones, right? But what some of you might notice is that with that new hosting option, that there's actually a number of extra slots for asset bundles. Now, most of these are kind of just us trying to future-proof ourselves and, and having these in place. So don't take it as any kind of announcement that support is coming for all of these platforms right away. But you have the option to upload a Windows bundle, an Android bundle, an iOS bundle, a Linux bundle, a Mac bundle, a Vision OS bundle. So there's quite a few different options in there that we're we're, we're planning for in the future, in essence, right? So, uh, yeah, all all of these things. We we certainly have enough people in the company that are uh, passionate, let's say, about Apple that they're not going to let me away with uh, uh, not making it work on iOS and and Vision OS, right? So, that's you know that's going to be a bonus, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Go ahead. Um, your new banter site, I think you're what you're calling it bantering or something or something like that. Uh, yes, bant.ing. That's right. Yeah. Banter. Okay. Bant.ing. Um, is that going to be hosted outside the U.S. or within the U.S.? Where's it going to originate? That's a good question. It's going to be hosted probably all over the world. Uh, so okay. it's it's uh, on it's cached is is effectively what it is, right? Uh, right. We're using okay. content delivery networks to cache all of these files in as many locations around the world as possible so that they can load a whole lot faster, right? So uh, that typically would have been the case with Glitch in the past. In fact, Glitch was usually pretty good as long as, you know, whatever ISP hadn't blocked them because a lot of people tend to use them for nefarious purposes, right? Which is right. always the way. But they were always pretty good, right? They had the same thing, caching and global CDNs, right? And if you're using stuff like GitHub Pages and, and things like that, that also has a real benefit. And for anybody who wants to use their own website to host their worlds, I highly recommend that you put Cloudflare in front of it, right? Cloudflare have a fantastic free tier. It's basically free, unlimited caching all over the world for your website. So if your website doesn't change all that often, that can actually mean that Cloudflare takes all of the brunt of the cost, especially if you've got a lot of traffic. I remember they saved our ass in the early days of SideQuest when we were 
scaling and trying to hold on for dear life, uh, Cloudflare took over 97% of our traffic and cost, uh, at no cost to us, which uh, honestly was great. But uh, yeah, bant.ing is part of that hosting I was talking about, where you're uploading the files and stuff like that. So you'll be able to pick your slug, which obviously will be unique. So it'll be deadz.bant.ing. That will be the actual address of your space uh, whenever all of this is set up. And what we hope is that uh, we're going to replace, you know, the way in the in the menu you can kind of uh, put in the first subdomain part of, of the glitch address, and then you just hit the .glitch.me on the keyboard. Well, we'll replace that with a .bant.ing, for instance, and then uh, the custom addresses, the slugs, will be auto-generated by default, right? So it'll be a short uh, five-character code. And then that, we're hoping, can actually serve as a code entry system, right? So if you have a private room, it's not featured, all that kind of stuff, you just put in, you just give somebody the slug, tell them to enter it, and maybe we'll wrap it up a little bit nicer in the UI so it just looks like a code entry and you don't even have to press that dot band dotting button, right? But I guess what we're trying to do there is is try to cover that um, uh, use case as well and trying to facilitate that with what we're doing. But then, yeah, we'll be able to give you your own custom uh, addresses as well so that you can change it away from whatever the code is and have your own memorable word that you could share with people too, right? So, yeah, there's going to be a, a bit of a uh, gold rush for those, I, I can imagine. Cheers, Kurt. Okay. So here's the part where I just waffle, basically, right? Because there's nobody here queued up to ask another question. So I just say mad things and just wait until somebody comes up. And funnily enough, often I get into it and I'm sitting here waffling away and I haven't even realized that there's somebody standing there for a few minutes and I'm really enjoying the sound of my own voice. <laughs> and I look back and I'm like, Jesus, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, anybody wants to ask a question, but be warned, if you don't ask a question, I'm going to pick someone at random. <laughs> Oh, Slickston, I'm going to assume you're coming towards the podium because you've got a question. Hit me. Yeah, I'll save you from waffling for a minute here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I I'm, am uh, guess I'm charged with uh, bringing uh, like a comedy club into banter because I've gotcha. done some world building and stuff in the past. And okay. uh, so uh, I guess uh, like so, I've, yeah, I've done alt space, uh, built worlds there and stuff. It looks like the process is pretty similar, right? Like you're kind of using Unity with a, your own yep. SDK. And, and that's then, right. Uh, I guess it sounds like you have different uh, versions for like uh, PC and all of that, I guess, but that's probably all handled through the SDK, I imagine, right? Yes, yes, it just does that for you automatically. You just hit build and it builds for all platforms at once. Okay. And I guess I should go to Discord if I have questions, and I guess uh, that's probably a good place to ask for help, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely, right? There's a lot of us, if it's not me and my team, there's a lot of people in the community who are pretty passionate about this as well and can help out if you're having any kind of issues. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think the process is reasonably simple right now. For some people, they, uh, they find the whole HTML side of it a bit daunting if they've really been sticking to Unity workflows for a while, but we can help you out with that. It's honestly, you paste it in once and then you kind of forget about it and you don't really need to worry about it too much after that, let's say. But this new thing I've been talking about where we're hosting it ourselves, that's gonna just wrap all that up into a single button you just press and then your space is live moments later. So okay, yeah, nice. but yeah, so, very, very similar yeah. to, to uh, VR chat or alt space, yeah. Okay, nice. So like, how does uh, like scripting, for example, work? Like, let's say I wanna like toggle stage lighting or something like that. Like, I don't, where would that be? Like, would that be in the space itself or like, where would that? Yeah, so there's a, a, a number of different options, in fact. Um, we're just on the cusp of launching a whole new thing, but most of the options will pretty much stay the same. We have a collection of scripts that allow you to glue things together right now in Unity. Uh, there's also an entire uh, JavaScript-based scripting interface to do whatever you want there on that side. And uh, in the future, we're also going to have Unity visual scripting support. So you'll be able to use that to kind of pull things together inside your space, inside your actual 
Uh, but that could also be used for prefabs, right? So uh, kit bundles, as we refer to them here, is basically just an asset bundle full of prefabs rather than a, a Unity scene. And in the prefabs, it's the same thing, I'm assuming anyway, <laughs> that we'll still be able to use uh, visual scripting graphs inside prefabs effectively, right? So you can bundle together scripting and functionality with uh, objects directly. Okay. Oh, nice. And I guess the other sort of question is like about like audio channels and things like that. Like, I don't know if you have like a way to set up zones where there's different volumes and things like that or. That's a really good question. Uh, it is something that we have been looking at. There's something uh, called interest groups, which is basically isolated audio groups within an audio instance, if you can think of it like that. And uh, we plan to try to use, there's there's uh, 256 interest groups that we can use in any room. Uh, and we did plan to use a certain portion of them to be able to create a, a network LOD system so that we can actually reduce some of the network overhead uh, for people that are you know much further away from you, that kind of thing. But we plan to have a user reserved range of these as well. So, you know, you, you might have, let's say, 50 interest groups that you can register, and then you can trigger them based on, let's say, a box collider. And the impact of that would be only people inside the collider can hear each other, and people outside can't hear the ones inside. So, yeah, we definitely plan to, to bring that in right now. Uh, we've been focused on trying to add a couple of quality of life uh, improvements onto the audio system that we've got, but there'll be a future overhaul that's coming that will probably address this and many other things and, and hopefully mature the audio system quite a bit more. Right. Okay. Yeah. And like you, you were saying earlier how you had a, like a mod tool where you could turn people's volume down or something like that. Like I, I could see that being handy. Yeah. So what we've got now is um, a custom roll off distance. So you can decide if you if you don't want to hear people, you know, more than two meters away from you, you can bring it right up to, let's say, two meters. Or if you want to be able to, you know, it, it'll still be spatial. It'll still actually, you know, people's voices will still trail off as they go further away. But the range will be, I think, uh, we'll probably end up at something like two to 50 meters, right? So that means that, yeah, each individual will be able to kind of control their own roll-off distance and then... If you've got a noisy group of people behind you, you can just pull that range in so that they're on the outside and you won't oh, okay. be able to hear them. Okay, yeah, that's 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 kind of different. I think that's personal moderation, I guess. But, yes. Yeah, yes. and I think the other thing I like you mentioned is so you can have different, uh, you can bump people to different instances. Like if you imagine at a comedy show in the main instance, you don't want hecklers bothering the performer, yes. right? You said you could just boot them to, a, you know, stage two or stage three and they won't even know that the, they can't be heard anymore, right? I, I like that. That's right, yes. The instancing system is somewhat automatic in that it will fill up and then overflow into another and into another and keep going like that. But yeah, the creator or the room uh, mod, let's say, has the power to move people around and to completely bypass all of that automatic stuff. And yeah, I mean, in the future, we're planning to lean into instances and make that an, a nice way to be able to represent different things going on in a space at the same time right whether it's you get to manually create instances instead of them being automatic and then you can create private instances or uh, we were also considering having events denoted as specific instance types inside of a, a, a space as well so a lot of that's going to probably come together in the form of a, a ui that gives you a, a view on all of this and lets you decide where you'd like to kind of jump into but that will also still be sort of limited from the user perspective compared to the mod in the world will be able to see it all and control control all of it basically. Nice, yeah, that's something I haven't seen any of the other platforms give for mod tools, so I could see that being uh, useful. It's definitely useful. Yeah, I've I've found it quite useful myself. Definitely, it's it's really good to be able to diffuse a situation, like you say, uh, in a way that doesn't always involve a kick or a ban, right? Because sometimes you can just mitigate, and things can kind of. The show must go on, so to speak, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and then you know, keep more people in the room having fun, and just let them go bother yep. uh, people in higher tiers. But good, awesome. I think that's uh, that's all I had. But looking forward to getting uh, some good shows going on in here and stuff. So it's exciting. Awesome. Right on. Hey, hey, Kurt. Well, yeah. Uh, if you need to get to the Discord, BanterVR.com. Uh, 
or discord.gg slash bantaverse, whichever is easier to remember, I guess. Uh, but yeah, absolutely jump in there. If you've got any questions, uh, there's a um, there's a, a role channel that you can assign a world role to, as well as an avatar role to, if you're interested in making avatars as well. And then, yeah, you, you'll see a bunch of channels pop up with loads of info. And yeah, we ge we generally, we're, we're, we're in that, uh, we're in that um, that early uh, kind of honeymoon phase, really, here on banter. So I think we're we're generally usually uh, okay in terms of not having to deal with too many uh, uh, you know negative individuals, not having to leverage those moderation tools that often. But it's definitely coming, right? And we need to we need to be prepared and and have things in place for it, right? But um, yeah, Discord is a great resource. There's lots of stuff on there. We just we just share things like shaders and tools and blender add-ons and all that kind of stuff uh, amongst ourselves and 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 within the community to try and yeah help people uh you know get get whatever it is they're trying to get done and uh yeah i'm waffling at this point i am waffling and kurt is standing there waiting to ask a question so i did it again <laughs> go ahead kurt um i was at a space called down under aquarium um, yes who who created that? I'm just and it had a neat feature in there where you Go could in world there. teleport oh. uh, between Hello? different platforms in there. I didn't know how how they were doing that teleportation within the world. Uh, Mr. Cubes on the man. Oh, up there. Uh, hey. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I just used the tele uh, teleport player feature when you just enter a trigger on a cube. What I just set up as a box collider. You can just teleport that to a random object. It doesn't even need to have a render on it so you could just teleport them anywhere around the map to be honest and you did that within unity yeah all unity yeah okay all right great thank you yes there is a teleport player script actually isn't that it teleport player and yeah uh, teleport player is the object a... that's right yeah. and it has a public function on it to be able to teleport the player so you can use it from any unity event uh, so anything you could have a button that could trigger it. Uh, you could have a box collider exactly, or maybe a collision. Uh, you could have anything that can uh, be triggered from a Unity event can can trigger that right now. But um, yeah, same thing as in uh, Winter Sport Resort, for instance. You know, you've got those little teleporters that bring you up and down from the slides. Uh, Slipstream Island. You, you know, you go into the. I mean, there's loads of them in there, but you go into the uh, into the cave underneath the waterfall, and it brings you up to the top of the uh, thing but yeah it's just moving the player basically uh effectively but um if anybody's interested you can also do the same from javascript it's not limited to just unity and uh i think it might not be working right now but there was a plan to also be able to uh control the rotational distance that or, or direction sorry that that somebody ends up whenever you teleport them and i believe there's one other flag that allows you to control whether or not it should reset or stop their velocity when it teleports them. And that's quite interesting because you can kind of create uh, portal-like effects with that. Uh, you might've seen these in the back rooms. You've got that hole that you continuously fall down and you continuously speed up. That's using just the same teleport player script, believe it or not. And uh, yeah, what else is there? There's also many corridors in there that you're walking down. You don't realize you turn a corner and it's just put you back to the start of that corridor and you're going for hours and hours. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And all of those things, of course, uh, will will still be working just like that in SDK v2 as well. Oh, no, we lost Kurt. And I also spider man uh, an interactable from across the room up to myself <laughs> but none of you can see it <laughs> only me um and i've also got two or three versions of myself dancing around in front of me but none of you can see that either uh maybe peroxide maybe peroxide oh, no, i gotta it. rejoin for that <laughs> oh no no i mean you can spawn your own that part's not synced although maybe that should be right we could just make those into networked objects <laughs> you yeah. can just carry them around together <laughs> yeah cool. that could be fun yeah Awesome. Uh, okay. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is that awkward moment where I slip back into the waffling. I just keep talking and talking about nonsense until somebody stands up, and then when they do stand up, I ignore them for a few minutes. Right? It's called being <laughs> fashionably late with <laughs> with whatever I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to just pick on somebody at random. I like the way I called it pick on as well. Uh, Vanquisher, how are you doing over there? Good. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Tell me, did you have a look at the new build? Uh, I haven't got a chance yet, but I will be doing that. Busy, busy. Yep. Bankshire's always got something cool Still going doing on. Some update for the uh, late show tonight. Gotcha. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Oh, nice. I keep thinking that it's Monday. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I just literally keep going back and forth all day long, keep thinking that it's Monday. I don't know why. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the late show. It is very late. Uh, it's quite late on my end. I would love to be able to make it, but I think it's like 4 or 5 a.m. for me. Um, but one of these nights, yeah, I will stay up, I promise you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it lives up to its name, doesn't it? I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At 4 a.m., is that what it is? It's what, sorry? Gotcha. Yes. Like this event and many others, in fact, uh, not all of them, uh, but some select events you'll find are live streamed to our YouTube, uh, which is really convenient if you can't make it because you can catch up there later. And uh, yeah, you should all go and subscribe to the YouTube because honestly, it makes Faye so happy when you do. I've seen it. She loves it. She goes crazy. She loves every little subscription she gets. So honestly, if you, you want to make Faye happy, uh, or if you'd prefer to make Faye sad, then don't, right? That's what, you, you know, it's your choice. <laughs> Oh, come on. Let's make Faye happy. Make Faye happy. 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 Oh, so like and subscribe, guys. Like and subscribe. Have you ever seen my evil That is fairy? banter VR. <laughs> Yeah, VR. Right? Mm -hmm. well, six know. people watching the YouTube stream for a moment. Right now? Yeah, six people. Woo! We're on fire. Woo! Hello, everyone at home. Viral. Oh, hi. Ah, Proxide. There you go. Viral. I've done it again. Hi, six go people. ahead. You're on the podium. I'm mean, okay. I'm just... My legs aren't tired. Uh, yeah, in regards to the audio stuff that we were talking about um, yes. with the groups and stuff, are you, are you, are you talking about like the, uh, the um, Unity Mixer? part of things or are you talking about other types of groups no no i'm talking about um uh, photons uh, interest groups is what they call right. it right I, so okay yeah you you can think of a room you know as you know the same audio instance that we're all in together uh in this space which is generally created based on the uh, address that we're in the the actual web address plus uh, the instance ID, in effect, is, is what creates that. But then within that, you'll be able to programmatically create dimensions and then decide to swap users between interest groups, depending on what they're doing, right? So they go through right, a trigger, right. puts them into a different group. So you can have one room where only people in that room can hear and hear each other. Uh, oh, okay, and... yeah, so that's a bit different then. So, but in regards to like having a, you know, your, your world audio uh, playing on different yes. tracks, basically. So you have like uh, sound effects as one, you know, and then maybe ambience as a second one. Gotcha. Um, that's yeah, that's a into, that's. Or... Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's something that we can do at a platform level to provide that kind of audio mixer uh, uh, access, let's say. And we actually right. already have some of that ourselves, right? At least in the menu, you can adjust the home music separate from the separate from the uh, voices of all the players. So it'll be a, a matter of expanding upon that and probably yep. leveraging layers or, or tags to be able to uh, contribute to that from within your spaces. So yeah, definitely. Um, I think what we'll also do there though, I think, you know, there's always going to be a certain amount of complexity and you'll probably find that even that dimensionality isn't going to cover it. And you'd like to have some more categories for audio and some more ways to turn things on and off. And um, once the new menu rolls out with it is coming a whole new UI system, which uh, once we can sort of clean it up a bit, you'll be able to use in your worlds too. And I'm hoping that's going to make it much easier to create these kinds of, you know, wall panel world space configuration UIs that you see right. in a lot of places. Or uh, there was even talk at one point of us trying to open up a custom page within the menu that a space can like pass a configuration into to populate a bunch of options that control that space. I'm not too sure where we landed on that, but 
we're definitely going to have all the UI parts in place to be able to do a lot of this. And and the new UI is way better than the existing Unity UI right, system. Right. It's much more performant and you can do a lot more cool things with it all sorts of uh, animations and effects and stuff that you can't do nice. easily i didn't think um, of that that you can actually just make your own sliders in world and just have people use those oh yeah for volume control really <laughs> yeah 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 100 i mean you can do that already it's in the crystal lake right yeah. you've got all those in there but this new system uh is going to be what we'll be trying to promote because of the performance benefits uh, that it brings primarily right and because yeah, you can do more with it. You can make stuff look better. So hopefully we can provide a bunch of templates out of the gate as well that people can kind of take nice. and use and uh, yeah, try and make that as easy as possible for people to choose, you know, the golden path in that regard rather than, yeah, the other UI. It's got lots Options of Options are always good. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. You know, it's funny. When well, you, thank you very much. When you, lift, when you lift your arms up and then you talk, I think your armpits light up. Do they? <laughs> Yes. yes. Yeah, they oh. do. Yeah. It looks like you're getting a power up. Oh my god, that's so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sick. oh my goodness. That's great. Um, try Go ahead, the mind slayer. Um, <laughs> Go for it. If I can remember my question now, that was hilarious. Um, okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, so right now, um, I've noticed that it's just one event after the another, um, and we really don't have much that laps over too much right now, mm -hmm. or y'all don't have much that laps over too much. Um, I know that I've come to you before and asked you this question about what's going to happen when we do, and you said yes. you, you'll have to choose, but um, like... At the same time, do, is it okay for that to happen? Like, can we, can I say, like, want to have an event at 10 o'clock, but there's another event at 10 o'clock? Like, when can we actually start doubling up on events? Like, can we do it now or later? Or what, what, what is the answer? Like, I don't know. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, to answer your last question first yeah you you oh, can sorry. do it now <laughs> right no 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 you, you're absolutely fine I, I just wanted to um answer that before i forgot but um okay. you, you can definitely do it right now um you know this is something we've talked about a lot internally and and Faye really has been doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of trying to ebb and flow the event system to try and get the maximum uh, value out of it for people uh oh no dead zed's only wearing pants um <laughs> yeah, but basically, yeah, in the future, this is absolutely going to be something that will happen. I mean, as it stands right now, any featured space in Banter can run whatever events they want in that space. Those events will be automatically featured, right? That's the system as it works today. You've got full creative control over those events. You can create them, manage them, change them. They will instantly update everywhere apart from maybe Google Calendar, because that only updates once a day, and Discord, because... Fuck Discord, but uh, <laughs> uh, okay. yeah, but um, no, I mean, this is it, right? We built a fully user managed event system to kind of give you guys the control to do with it kind of whatever you want. And eventually that overlap is going to come. It's going to be something that, you know, we can't really avoid, you know, at least if this goes yeah. the way we want it to, where things are going to scale, we have to be ready for that. We have to try and build for that as well. And what's Honestly, what's great about this is that for the last uh, just over four and a half years, uh, me and my team have been focused really heavily on trying to find ways to provide discovery for content. And we have a load of tools and strategies and tricks and all sorts of different things that we've been playing with over the years in terms of how can we make it easier for people to be able to find events when the event system goes like that right and i think uh -huh. um right now subscribing to events is a big part of it because in future we think it'll probably be most more useful for people to have a feed of what events they're subscribed to right and then some kind of a a, a way to uh facilitate discovery of new events right whether it's just yeah. browse in the wild or show me something at random or like let me see some curated lists of hidden gems or give me a list of categories and just let me browse through different categories and yeah, find things that nice. I like. and then just subscribe find, like, to book them. readings or something like that like exactly and, yeah that would be nice 
So those kind of discovery tools we think are really going to underpin the scale solution for the events and honestly for spaces as well, right? It's much the same, you know, you can have your list of favorite spaces, which is kind of like your list of subscribed events. And then you can have categories of spaces that you can kind of browse and try and find things. And I think the key there is just taking some of these fundamental tools and just really nailing them, really polishing them, right? So that you've got right. clear cut categories that make sense, that you know what they are, you, you, they're always the same, you can find your way back to them, right? Uh, yeah, like but also, and stuff like that. Yeah, but also, uh, you know, a suite of filters and a powerful search, right? These are fundamentals that we've all kind of come to appreciate on pretty much every modern website that's out there. And I think those sorts of features can be really well positioned, right? And in some cases, you can have those features and they're less well positioned, probably like how we've got them positioned on the SideQuest website right now, right? They're not easy to find and they could definitely be better. Uh, and that's really what we want to do in future is try and get those those really important bits that you're going to use all the time, get them right up front and center, right? Get them where they should be so you can get to them easily and use that to find your stuff, right? And yeah. A big important part about it really is just, you know, getting feedback from you guys along the way, because I've been there myself plenty of times in the past where the community has been ignored and, you know, the vision of one person or the management is, is what they kind of push forward with. And if there's ways for us to improve, if there's ways for us to enable more discovery, that's going to be the sort of thing that we're going to be really eager to hear because the last thing we're going to want to do is just decide to start locking thing th things down and blocking things off. Uh, discovery and, and enabling access to content is pretty much what we're all about. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, that's us. We're, we've only a few minutes, just a second. We're going to have to close up. I'm only joking. <laughs> Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Shoseki was talking something about a platform called Altspace. Anybody ever heard of Altspace? No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fever dream. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, just to summarize, I think, uh, or to paraphrase uh, what Shoseki was saying, more information about the event before you enter it and more uh, ways to engage with the event, the event creators and other things that are related to the event, even if it's not the event itself. Right. So that I think broadly covers being able to uh, click into an event, see all the information, see their socials and their twits and whatever else. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that's coming uh, with the new menu overhaul. We're going to have, bat, you know, both for spaces and for events, there's going to be a new layer, uh, a new landing page, if you will, for that specifically, where you'll go in, you can see more info, you can see maybe a preview of who's in the world, you know, prioritizing your friends on your friends list first to give you a sense of what's going on in there, you know, kind of give you all the info that you should need in order to be able to make the decision to jump into that event, right? Because uh, ultimately, that's what we want to do. We want to be able to encourage people to uh, engage with uh, stuff that's in the menu. So um, yeah, I think when we overhaul our new UI, that's probably going to be in the first immediate revision after it launches, I think, because we're trying to uh, minimize uh, too much feature creep there as we go forward. But it's definitely something we've talked about it internally. Uh, Faye and myself and the team have had discussions about how it's hard sometimes to get a full understanding of what the event is about just from the very limited title and the and the shortened summary line. But one thing we are going to have out of the gate in the new menu is tooltips. So straight away, you'll be able to just hover your way through the menu and get more detail as you hover over things. That's not uh, really, the the end solution, of course, doesn't really meet 
uh, the goal you're talking about, Shoseki, but it provides a little bit more uh, in the interim, at least. Yeah, no problem. Are there, are there I think that's probably a good time to to call it, Shoseki, right? Oh no, dead yeah. Zed, don't don't sit like that. Don't sit like that. When you Dude. walk backwards, you can see it all. <laughs> Don't question my you're gonna have, You're going to have to make those shorts. You're going to have to make those bigger. <laughs> you're not allowed <laughs> to show bare naked ass. You've got plenty of just We don't want short <laughs> shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there even mesh underneath there? Why didn't you just get rid of the whole midsection? I did. Oh, no. What are you hiding under there? <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not fish down here. No. Yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> thanks everybody uh, for coming. I'll just give Shoseki the quick wrap up that he loves. So we'll all just wave to the camera, wave to the people at home. There's six of them apparently. Let's see if I wonder if they're all still here. Are they all still on the stream? Nine, nine, nine. nine people. Oh my God. Wow. Oh, wow. Famous. We're famous. Well, uh, welcome and thank you and we love you and Yay. all nine of you. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, put some pants um, on. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind. Yeah. <laughs>